Hello friends, uh, welcome back to my channel. In this video, uh, we are going to learn very interesting uh, troubleshooting concept which I have learned uh, in the recent past. Everyone must have heard about ARP spoofing. <laughs> First of all, what is ARP? Address Resolution Protocol, so, which is a 48-bit address binded with our, most of the networking devices or even uh, our normal uh, laptop desktops has a network interface card in which the 48-bit um, uh, address, unique address will be binded, okay? So what it does, it basically, uh, when communication happens from layer one to layer seven, it translates the communication from machine level language to address level language. I mean, uh, from um, layer two level 48 bit address to layer three level 32 bit address. I mean, internet protocol address, it converts. So over here, um, I'm going to share my experience, which I had uh, uh, interfered in the recent past. So what happened in my Cisco FTD, any connect configuration, I, I use uh, two specific NAT configuration. One for, uh, I mean, one is a static NAT and the other one is a dynamic NAT. So what the one you see disabled currently is what made a bigger impact to the network traffic. I mean, specifically for the outbound internet traffic. So currently this is disabled. This NAT configuration is specifically used for my local network to be able to talk to, when I say in the local network, the VPN pool network to be able to talk to the internet, as well as when it tries to go out to the internet, it has to use the interface address as a NAT IP address. If you see my the uh, top down uh, NAT configuration here, I have configured this as a dynamic NAT, but source interface as outside, destination interface object as outside, and source address my VPN pool IP address and destination address to any internet address, and it uses uh, interface IP address as uh, NATed IP address. I mean, it converts that as a interface IP address and uh, to reach the any uh, internet uh, IP. So we have to uh, see this very keenly. And uh, let's come back to a uh, page where we were talking about our spoofing. What is our spoofing? It's nothing but someone in the network who is trying to showcase himself as he is the available guy in the network to respond for any uh, the original request that has been come from. Uh, source user in a normal uh, routing uh, operation what happens the LAN user uh, he connected to a switch or a hub uh, and uh, based on the layer 3 um, uh, it, he will try to reach the internet based on the normal routing operation so what happens when our catch or our poison or our uh, spoofing happens a malicious user or a malicious device can be connected to a same switch where the LAN user and the L3 device has connected. But instead of the LAN user's RP, RP, uh, sorry, RP address used for finding the um, network interface code, what happens? The malicious user or malicious device will start to re receive that, that ARP configuration information and he will try to respond to the LAN gateway as, okay, he is the actual source user and he wanted to talk to the internet. So in this case, what happened, he will uh, start to send his own ARP information to the layer 3 device, which is available on the network. This is called ARP poisoning, ARP flooding, ARP spoofing. So these are the different names used for in this. Okay, let's come uh, go to one um, specific example. In my case, what I have faced in my network. Okay. I have a inter two internet uh, providers. Here I have mentioned as ISP1 and then ISP2. So the ISPs, they are provided their handoffs as uh, copper so that the uh, ISP uh, connections are directly connected to a layer 2 switch by creating a layer 2 VLAN. So this is uh, ISP1 connected to one layer 2 switch. Uh, and ISP2 connected to another light to switch. So from where all the networking devices or uh, L3 devices like 
whatever you see here, like Palo Alto Firewall, Palo Alto, Cisco ASA, Cisco AFT, these are uh, connected. Okay. So uh, he, if you specifically notice here, the Palo Alto Firewall uh, has a two uh, internet circuits terminated, one to ISP1 and one to ISP2. Same for Palo Alto 2 firewall. Same, likewise, each L3 devices are interconnected or trying to use both ISPs for, I mean, uh, going out to the internet. So th basically, these firewalls are configured to use both ISPs for redundancy purpose. But only the case, Cisco FTD is connected to only one single ISP. This particular Cisco FTD connected to ISP2 and this particular FTD connected to ISP1. From a LAN perspective, for each layer three firewall devices, it has a connectivity. This particular connectivity acts as a LAN interface for that uh, for each firewall. Here comes the main part. This particular guy, the one you see on the rightmost side, as an example for us here, this guy is where this NAT has configured. Okay, consider this NAT configuration has available and the device made available in the network. So what happens as soon as the NAT configuration um, available and applied to this device from FMC, remember this connected to one of the ISP switch and it also connected to Nexus 7 switch. Here we have to come keep remember or keep consider one main thing here say for example uh, this particular uh, isp has 2.2.2.0 slash 28 it uses slash 28 uh, ip schema likewise this particular isp uses 1.1.0 slash 28 so slash 28 means it, it has usable 14 ips so this firewall uses one ip address this consumes one ip address and this consumes one IP address, and this consumes one IP address, and this consumes one IP address. So how many IP addresses are currently used? Four IP addresses, because these four different uh, devices are directly connected to this ISP. Likewise, same for uh, this uh, ISP one also. Yes, in, for the sake of uh, this example, we are using the right side of a device, which has a wrong configuration. So what happened as soon as you push the NAT policy, this guy, started uh, reacting as i have all usable ip address of this particular subnet which means all 14 different uh, public ip address or uh, the ip address configured in this vlan are only responsible or only applicable for this guy what this guy does the traffic working as normal for these devices until we push the panat configuration which I shown you before. As soon as it applied all the traffic from going out from this firewall and all the traffic going out from this firewall, again this firewall are stopped working. Literally stopped working and it's not been able to access internet. What we have to check as a preliminary check, we, we can check whether ISP is alive, the gateway is reachable, uh, from the layer to switch and uh, we can also check from all the layer 3 devices whether uh, uh, the gateway is reachable or not. As soon as we started facing the uh, internet uh, access issue, none of these firewalls are able to access or uh, ping the default gateway because when um, this particular source device tries to ping a gateway, ping response is happening to the default gateway but from the default gateway uh, if we are trying to ping the each device's outside interface IP, it's not um, pingable. Same happens here also. As soon as we found that, okay, the layer 3 device at the ISP side does not able to reach these devices, means these are directly connected devices in the same subnet. But even though it's not able to uh, reach the, uh, the connected interface device. When we check the ARP information for each devices, device one, device two, and device three, when we check the ARP information, we found one similarity. All these interfaces, connected interface, showing here ARP of this particular firewall outside interface. I repeat one more time. When we check the uh, show ARP information, on device one, device two, 
and device 3 i was seeing the same arp information uh, on all these three devices when we checked uh, that the fourth device arp information i am seeing across all these three devices i found that this particular firewall has uh, the same arp information what i am seeing on these devices so that's where uh, the uh, loop has come which means it needs to get the arp of uh, the internet uh, router it's getting the arp of their cisco ftd the wrong nat configuration what is configured here so if you notice the nat configured as source as outside destination also as outside it should be not in this manner it should be from inside to outside so this is the biggest mistake which we haven't identified initially but later we and during the course of a troubleshooting it was identified and then a wrong NAT configuration has disabled and then the right configuration out uh, has been created and as soon as we push the policy and the clear the ARP current ARP details on these interfaces the problem resolved and then internet access from all these individual L3 devices are started working so this is the biggest problem I have identified in the recent past and this caused a major outage in the network good that we were able to identify uh, this type of layer 2 issue i mean because of the configuration issue it became a layer 2 issue again when i say layer 2 issue it's not about the connectivity it's all about the layer 2 communication what has been happening on the directly connected devices yeah i think uh, the video must be useful for you if yes please do share your comment share this video to your friends and don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you friends